Let's have a little reality check to make sure we all got the message. Fault. You did wrong. And remember, being abused by a male does make you gay. Right. And telling someone about it does make you less of a man. The bottom line, if you are molested, you wanted it, you did something to deserve it. That make you weak. No offense. Being molested means you're gay. When you're on your knees at your father's funeral, at his casket, and you're saying goodbye to him, and then you have nine orgasms right there while your whole family is standing behind you. It just makes you never want to have another orgasm as long as you live. But you know what? You just keep on coming. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. I want your love. I want your love. I want your Well, good morning to you, chat. Hopefully you're having a fantastic week as uh, Tuesday rolls around. And we pray for God uh, that the weekend comes sooner so we don't have to do the normal shit we do during the normal week. Lots of stuff to go over today. You know, initially I had planned to do a dedicated thing to what you see on screen. Nigerian scammers. 419 scammers. I wanted to go over uh, just some internet history share the lovely story of the power book uh, for those of you unfamiliar with it uh, just to have a good bit of fun but a lot of shit's been going on a lot of stuff happened so I, I'm gonna have to take some time to address that it looks like our boy Danny our boy Danny is uh, he's deleted his YouTube channel uh, some speculate he was super hacked but the YouTube channel is now it's gone all the videos are gone uh, which is a shame because I genuinely enjoyed the videos and I wanted to explore the lore of our Danny boy. Now, he still has his DeviantArt, so hopefully that goes unmolested because I want to read all his amazing works of fiction. And if that disappears, then it's all gone. And there's no way to get it back. It's a very sad day in Sonicville. It's a very sad day. Christian Weston Chandler apparently has targeted our little boy, aided by the evil... Tonka saw and uh, he's gone into hiding he's in witness protection trying to survive uh, the the terrors that uh, lurk out there at the hands of these two nefarious individuals CWC and Tonka saw working in concert is a it's a dynamic duo uh, devious individuals that are making our boy or our poor Danny boy just very upset my forever friend is very upset I don't know how he's going to make it through this uh, trying time, but I think with prayer and vitamins, he'll find a way. He'll find a way to do it. A little bit of uh, late breaking news happened this morning. I saw somebody tweeted out. I'm going to share it with you. I'll, I'll actually go on to the page itself. But it appears that our Hampshire guy, uh, the guy doing the underwater hamster utopia, uh, is being blackmailed by Redditors. And I'm not making that up. It's a very long post going over the blackmail he is currently experiencing at the hand of fucking Redditors. So, uh, well, you know, we'll jump right into that, I guess. It's, uh, it's very confounding. I don't know why Redditors would be targeting him, but that's apparently what's going on. They're threatening to have articles written about him if he doesn't pay up a certain amount of money. Yes, I see everybody saying, what the fuck? Well, 
you know, we have a theme going today. I'm going to talk about the power book. That's something from something awful. And apparently these Redditors are also related to something awful. So give me a moment. Let me pull this up and we'll take a look and find out what the fuck is happening with uh, our hamster guy. Give me one moment. It's his newest post on Patreon. If you go to Hampshire on Patreon, you'll be able to see it yourself. You can read through it later on at your leisure. But um, let's let us take a look. Just give me one moment here. Get it opened up and we'll dive right in. Sad day. Lots of sad things going on. Jesus. Uh, yeah, let's do that. There we go. Okay. I'll try to full screen this as best I can so you can see everything. And we'll just read along. We'll find out what the fuck is happening in Hamsterville. Get everything set up here. Uh, just one moment. Okay. Uh, let's let's dive into this and find out what in the fuck is going on. And why Redditors are targeting our hamster guy. Okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is his post from a little after midnight. Oh boy, the first of probably many blackmail attempts. We've got a, I guess, a direct message. I don't really use Reddit, so I, I'm guessing that's what this looks like. Who knows? Or maybe this came through his Discord. I, I don't fucking know. But it's a chat request, and it's a, well, it is from a Redditor from 13 days ago. Accept the request if you'd like to continue the conversation. We won't notify them if you decline. And a preview of the chat says, Where's my money before I assist in writing an article for Slashdot? And also comment deletion fee. $270.45 to be exact. And that is a message he received. So here we go. Oh boy, the first of probably many blackmail attempts. Well, would you look at that? I thought only famous wealthy people had to deal with this shit. I'm just the underwater hamster guy. This person's post history seems to indicate that they have prior experience with blackmail too. Please leave them alone for the time being. I'm contemplating going to the cops and don't want them to have grounds for complaint. That I incited mass action against them or whatever. Leave this to me. I'd like to just state right now for anybody watching this video, I have no association with the hamster guy. Uh, no, no affiliation whatsoever. We are just reading this as concerned citizens. Uh, and we have not been directed to read this nor act upon it. So what is the dirt they claim to have on me? Uh, that they expect me to pay them to keep it under wraps. And it links to a screen cap here from Enjoy Prison Asshole. Don't want to, uh, don't want to like ruin everyone's parade, but this dude created a successful comic in college. Even made a pilot and sold it to some studio that was going to produce it. Then he got arrested for transporting a minor across state lines to bring her to a state where the age of consent was lower than the current state. Subsequently, he got kicked out of art school, lost his show deal, was sentenced to 100,000. I had to read that a few times. 100,000 hours of community service since he didn't technically rape her, just brought her illegally across state lines. Yes, 100,000 hours of community service and like a 12-year suspended sentence. Dude's family nearly entirely disowned him. His sister, who didn't talk to him since, then passed away recently, and he is barred from going to her funeral. Dude's a crazy motherfucker. On the spectrum, not an insult, the truth. And a pedo. However, uh, recently he joined up with some pedo hunters online to redeem his name. Even though he had sex with a 14-year-old when he was 20 and illegally transported her across state lines to avoid rape charges. A plus dude. I'm not 100% sure if this is the same person, but this one guy was warning everybody who'd listen that I'm guilty of the following. Made a pilot for an animated television program which was canceled because I was apparently arrested for transporting a minor across state lines. I was sentenced to 12 years it would seem. This sentence was suspended in favor of 100,000 hours of community service, 11 plus years. I was then disowned by my family, the story goes. There they, uh, they are then said to have barred me from her funeral. She's been cremated, actually. I slept with a 14-year-old when I was 20. People were ready to believe him at first. A lie gets around the world seven times before the truth rolls out of bed. One small problem, though. Court records are publicly accessible. Nothing from Florida where I lived for a couple of years. Now let's try Oregon. And he appears to be on some criminal database. Uh, this is a Judicial Apartment Online Records. 
Not all of these are me. There were two guys with the same first and last name, but a different middle one. It's blacked out because I'd rather not hand over their personal identifying information, given the type of attention I'm now attracting from the wrong sort of people. However, uh, anybody who has gotten their hands on my name and other information has everything they need to replicate these searches, uh, search results on their own. And they'll be able to verify that the screenshots I posted here are legit. So what's my criminal record look like? Let's open these up to find out what the specific charges were. And it appears he's, pay or he's opening up his name on the Oregon judicial record search and we've got a violation unclassified nine or non-payment of fare i didn't have a valid fare when i rode light rail one time it's true i confess i am a monster would mad science be chaotic evil or chaotic neutral i got nabbed one time by one of those automatic speed trap cameras at an intersection lesson learned parking tickets Three of these, not my finest hour. You think you can dash into the bank, make a deposit, and dash out before the meter maid sees you. But she's teleport she's a teleporting witch. Now let's look at the sex offender registry. And this appears to be uh, this similar to what we had before with Florida and Oregon. Uh, posting negative results, no results found. Wow, it's fucking nothing. For the record, I also never wrote a pilot or had a show deal. My remaining family and I have only become closer as of late. And my sister was excited to be back in my life after prison until the accident. Only one person bothered to check the accusations. Seems to be a post of a person trying to figure out what's going on, as they didn't find any records in the U.S. system either. Uh, but they did bring up, I should probably read this. Uh, I find the third order of magnitude more likely than the others, as anyone who's been on the internet that long would have made some enemies. Do you happen to remember the Temple of the Screaming Electron? My sincere condolences regarding your sister, and good luck with Hampshire. FYI, you got the wrong username, and it's at whatever that is. He's referring to a couple of people I used to argue with on message boards about religion, mostly the age of the earth, evolution, the Big Bang, abiogenesis, whether souls exist, and so on. My brain was less put together then, so I didn't grasp that these are not dry academic topics for people who have used, who have used such beliefs to cope with the death of a loved one. I now understand why somebody would resort to that. It didn't make sense to me, as a result, why they re reacted with sudden intense hostility to these arguments. They just seemed to be randomly aggressive dickheads, so I treated them accordingly. I would always retaliate, which would only further enrage them, steadily escalating over time. Part of the reason was I was an insecure young guy, and arguing with creationists was easy and made me feel smart for having bested someone much older. But I got into the habit to begin with because I attended a pair of private religious schools, one of which taught young earth creationism. We've got a bit of a, a fedora tipper here. As a small spurgling obsessed with accuracy, facts, and precision, imagine how frustrating it was to be mocked ruthlessly by other students for defending evolution and to be disciplined for it by faculty. There was no voice of reason to pipe in and back me up. Who would I complain to? The teachers? They were fundies too. They wouldn't put a stop to the mocking. They would join in and reward the perpetrators later. As you might expect, when I got free from the uh, situation, I wanted some payback. The strangers I exacted that payback on usually did very little to provoke it, didn't understand the background I was coming at them from, and how it affected me. I must have simply seemed like a randomly aggressive dickhead. I regret that. I was wrong and petty to punish somebody for something they had no hand in. I'm still paying for it today. I angered these forum users severely enough that they dug up my personal information. With that information, they put up websites of their own, as well as comments and entries and others, proclaiming all the accusations about me you've seen above plus some less commonly repeated extras. <clears throat> that I'm a racist, a diaper fur, an inflation fetishist, etc., with photoshopped images of my head on a guy in a Nazi uniform, or a diapered mascot costume, some unflattering characters, that sort of thing. I kept my head down for many years, waiting for the hosting of the attack sites to expire. I got some of the entries removed by emailing site admins with the exact evidence posted earlier, that they were deliberately inaccurate smears. It's true I was expelled from university, but because I offended another student. She was a new age type, follower of Novus Spiritus, a cult founded by the late television psychic Sylvia Brown. She invited anybody present to stay after class for a spiritual discussion, which turned out to be her propagating Sylvia's teachings to the other students, perhaps in an attempt to recruit. We were invited to share our views on spiritual matters, so I shared mine. 
that all of it was nonsense, that Sylvia Brown is a cult leader who misled the grieving parents of children she insisted were dead, only for them to be later found alive. I actually think I vaguely know who Sylvia Brown is. Uh, it's kind of like this withered old woman uh, who would show up on, like, you've probably seen her on, like, Nancy Grayson shit, where, oh, I got a feeling the, the kid can be found in the dumpster behind uh, the Kmart, that kind of shit. And she ne she never got anything right, if that's the right one, if I'm thinking of the right one. Uh, this made her voice shaky and angry. She berated me. One of her orbiters asked if she wanted to hit me, but she did not cry out until after I left and she'd gone to the professor. Then the crocodile tears flowed generously. She was de uh, she was petite, dressed cutesy, usually spoke softly, and was very f uh, fondly regarded by her peers. Accordingly, if you didn't personally know him, you'd understandably assume anybody who made such a pure and wholesome creature cry has got to be either Satan McHitler or Ronald McZuckerberg. The professor assumed this, and I was suspended for violation of the student religious tolerance policy in the student handbook. What if I'd gone to the professor and cried? Would she be the one expelled for intolerance? Would anybody have cared? Certain tears are magic, it would seem. When I came in for the suspension hearing, I told them it had been that I'd done nothing wrong. I'd been invited to offer my opinion on spiritual matters, and I'd done so. I felt I'd been helpful and compassionate to disrupt a cult recruitment attempt, and that any authority which would punish somebody for upholding truth is illegitimate. This was wrong or this was the wrong answer, evidently, as I was expelled shortly after. The newspaper framed it in a sensationalist but inaccurate way that I had no control over and was not consulted about prior to publication. I did not sue because, as they inform me, the policy protecting the religious perspectives of students does not protect non-religious perspectives. It will protect you if any uh, if you are any religion, but not if you're in none. In that case, only the religious students' complaints of intolerance will be acted on. Uh, that used to piss me off, but I found I cared less and less as I grew older until I realized it had never been as vital as I believed it to, and I tried to unfuck other people's brains. Uh, why did it seem important enough to go through all that grief for? Why did I think it was my job? I was and am developmentally delayed by about 10 years, which my underwater hamster hobby kind of suggests. In my 20s, I had the same emotional intelligence and general maturity of the crustiest teenage edgelord. That, and probably some degree of arrested development due to my experience in middle school, formed the basis for a relationship I had in Florida with a girl in her final year of high school. To my stupid ass, incomplete brain, this made it seem like uh, all the more... To, okay. To my stupid ass, incomplete brain, this made it seem all the more romantic that the world would disapprove. It was us against the world. I had plenty of warnings from friends, too. It was a Scott Pilgrim knife chow situation where literally all of my friends cautioned me one by one that it was a mistake, that it would not turn out well, etc. But I did not listen because a bad case of the feels made me even more retarded than usual. I made myself known to her parents right away, laid out my life like an open book so they could do background checks and otherwise investigate me from any angle they wanted or from any angle they liked. Satisfied that my intentions were good, they allowed me to date their daughter. She and I are still good friends and talk every so often to check in, in, or in on each other's lives. I, uh, I am water well under the bridge for her, but because she's a sweet person, she now er, voraciously, I can't pronounce this word. You've heard me try to pronounce words. I uh, vociferously defends me to anybody who has concerns about my character. So yes, I am guilty of loving and being loved by somebody I wasn't meant to, but that is the only true part of it. If I had done some sort of depraved, sinister predator, don't you think her parents would have called the cops on the phone instead of, uh, inside of a minute? Would she still defend me today if I'd taken advantage of, of her or imposed myself or mistreated her? I don't deny the large age differences are sketchy. They are certainly a red flag, but it depends on the person. It depends on their intentions, their state of mind, background, etc. I don't doubt that most of the time when a man is interested in somebody much younger, he has a sinister intent. But as sick as someone, uh, as sick as some people are of hearing this, not all men are like that. I also don't bring up my autism as a shield against judgment. Anybody who wants to judge me is going to do it. I only care that they have the complete information first. If you're going to hate me, do it for something I actually am guilty of. A decade of being unable to get a job interview, or being pulled out of training suddenly and dismissed without explanation, or being abruptly ghosted by girls I've been dating for months, 
Seems like suitable punishment, in my opinion. It was a painful adventure in a world of shit, during which time I briefly lived outdoors in a hole. Le <laughs> I'm sorry. It was a... <laughs> It was a painful adventure in a world of shit, during which time I briefly lived outdoors in a hole, left behind where city workers had uprooted a tree, bought a gun from a stranger at a party, and contemplated suicide on the daily. I would not be the first autist these people have driven to suicide by doxing, though they do a pretty good job of erasing nearly all evidence of it. They've got members in administrative positions of many websites, uh, which can censor criticism. They would make ens er, excellent Stasi. I learned a great deal from the whole mess, but wouldn't do it again. Uh, once through, the meat grinder was enough for me, though the experience was tenderizing. Since then, I've been able, or I've been struggling to rebuild my life. I had enough problems before being doxxed. 80% of adult Spurgs are unemployed. I didn't need that shit working against me, too. I probably should have thought of that sooner, but, you know. I did not give up, however. For there were hamsters to submerge, and the brief portion of these three miserable years in Florida that I spent living outdoors gave me a deeper appreciation and concern for the homeless, as I met a lot of them during that time. Uh, what I have done with my life since then? Rescue bats sometimes. Other times, hand out gloves to the homeless bros, a.k.a. hobros, ahead of the cold season. Or care packages with food, socks, hand warmers, ponchos, a mylar bivy snack, or sack, First aid, hygienic supplies and such, in a sealed container so it wouldn't get wet. Or another round of care packages with collapsible umbrellas and USB power banks as well. Uh, this is a side of me my doctors didn't see. Whoever last pissed you off, you only saw a snapshot of that person on a bad day. You don't know whether they came to you in a, from a bad situation. You haven't seen the gentleness in their hearts. You only know the worst version of them. Maybe my doctors are secretly gentle people. That's just not the side they chose to show me. These were the sort of people that voted in or that voted for Roy Moore, who was as old as I am now when he actually did creep on teenage girls he didn't know, who wanted nothing to do with him. I knew many of my tormentors, though, prior arguments, to be apologists of the Catholic Church and their multi-century ongoing protection of child abusers. These are people who worship a Heavenly Father who impregnated Mary when she was 13, despite the tremendous power differential, presumably rendering her unable to consent to bearing his child. The same, di uh, the same dude who did not include an age of consent anywhere in the scripture, but condemned gay sex in five verses, three of which are in the New Testament. Or if they're Jewish, they worshipped a being who gave them permission to abduct virginal young girls from conquered lands, to be forced brides or concubines for Israelite soldiers, to say nothing of the explicit permission to enslave foreigners, but not other Jews. Or perhaps they're Mormons, who worship a man that married a 14-year-old named Helen Marr Kimball by telling her parents that he'd been commanded by an angel with a flaming sword, and she'd go to hell if she said no. Or if they're Muslims, their founder, well, Aisha, you know. Everybody knows what's the deal there with Muhammad and Aisha. This sort of thing is kind of a running theme in all the sand religions. One might cynically conclude that protecting pervy dudes from consequences was part of the purpose of founding them. The nature of human societal politics is such that they turn a blind eye to all of this, because it's not what they wish to see. They likewise turn a blind eye to the improprieties of Roy Moore, whichever pastor had been convicted this week, and the illegal activities of the Vatican, because hornets know better than to sting other hornets. So it's not that they wanted to sincerely er So it's not that they were sincerely concerned for the girl I was dating, or even that they were righteous moral crusaders punishing me for my deviance. They were just a superficially noble pretext for their actions. Their motivations were to inflict as much harm and misery as legally possible on somebody who once made them feel humiliated during arguments about the age of the earth, the history of religion, and the origin of living things. I said a lot of cringeworthy things back then, but the only actual dirt they could find was not quite bad enough without significant embellishment. The embellished versions of events which you read earlier is the first introduction to me that many people will have people I might have liked to be friends with, but who turned against or who turned against me before we even met. What sort of picture would your enemies paint of you? Would it be accurate? Probably not. They would paint as bad as a picture as they could with the facts and then take a couple dozen creative liberties. When somebody is angry with you, they don't care about what's true. They care about finding dirt, or making some up if need be. They don't feel obligated not to misrepresent you, 
And so long as there is even a single slim nucleus of truth to their tangled mess of lies, they won't consider themselves liars. Neither will any of them feel personally responsible for the harm inflicted by the group they are a part of. That's a ma or that's the magic of mob mentality. Uh oh, looks like I'm getting I'm getting name dropped here, boys. Smoke them if you got them. Mr. Mediker, who I owe the success of the Patreon to in the first place, is married to someone half his age, and it says some pretty rude things about him online, about his lovely wife Jade too. Doxing gets pretty vicious, and nothing is off limits. Oh, how you doing there, Jade? Oh, do you, do you like candy? You want to come in? Want to come in, Mr. Medica's magic van, little girl? We'll go. Uh, I'll show you how to make fun of people on the internet. It'll be a good time. Oh, come on! Oh, he's, I'll have your parents sign a permission slip later. They described him as a racist, despite admitting he has vocally opposed racism, because he says things that are a racist would say by their reckoning, or that he's a homophobe, or a homophobe, or a misogynist, based on the inferences we've intended to make from out of context quotations. That's the sort of weasel-worded rational or rationale for smearing somebody you can expect to see a great deal of, uh, if ever you become noteworthy enough for doctors to target you, hoping to squeeze some dollars out of you or just use you as a punching bag. I don't want to have to show all of this to every new person I meet, because nobody fact-checks anything. I don't want to have to deal with strangers trying to blackmail me for your guys' donation money. That is not a position I thought I'd end up in. I just want to live my life. I want to entertain, or entertain you fine fellows. I want to look after small critters. I want to find people worse off than I am, put food in their stomachs, gloves on their hands, an umbrella over their head, and dry socks on their feet. I want to not have old wounds reopened while I'm writing my sister's eulogy. Anyway, there are still hamsters to submerge. That is, that is one hell of an entry. Okay, change this up a little bit here. One second, chat. People saying, bring Jade on. I can't. It's her bedtime right now. I can't. She's, she's got school in the morning, and she needs a good night's sleep. I can't possibly wake her up right now. You know how cranky kids get. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do that. Holy shit. It's a lot to unpack from that. Uh, well, you know, I'll say this. Uh, one, I can't believe somebody's blackmailing a guy doing a hamster project on the internet. Um, two, I, I, I haven't checked the, the criminal databases myself, but I'm going to guess he's fairly confident showing search results from criminal databases and the sex offender registry. Uh, three, I don't think it's fucking possible to get 100,000 hours of community service. In fact, I, I'm pretty sure that's an impossibility. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard of somebody sentenced to 11 fucking years of community service for abducting a child and raping them across state lines. Uh, and I guess my final follow-up to that is, if he's some autistic 20-year-old and he's dating a 17-year-old, yeah, that, that would raise red flags. But if her fucking parents gave him the go-ahead and met him and everything, I, I, I guess I don't see the fucking issue. I mean, it's, it'd be one thing if he's some creepy fuck on the internet, you know, grooming a kid. But if he met mom and dad and they're like, yeah, sure, go ahead, date our daughter. And she's one year away from graduation. Eh. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I find it really hard to fathom that fucking Redditors are blackmailing a guy who's making a hamster utopia underwater. Am I, is, am I fucked up about that? I mean, is that, that seem insane to anybody else? You know, he links to some entry on Wikipedia talking about this group of people, and it seems to revolve around something awful. And I, I don't know. I, I didn't fuck around in their religious uh, thread, so I couldn't tell you how heated it got in there. But if he was some fucking fedora-tipping atheist talking shit to a bunch of creationists on SA and they got really angry, I could see them fucking with him for a while. But it's, it's been, I mean, he said he lived in a hole. He lived in a hole in the fucking forest for three years. They fucked him up so bad with the shit they did. He lived in the forest in a fucking utility hole for three years. <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? Oh, this is one of those things where I, 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 I like I want to dig into it. I want to see like what the fuck is going on. 
Uh, yeah, because that just got put up tonight. I, you know, I stumbled across this guy. I, I think somebody sent it in as a super chat. And uh, I love the fucking idea of underwater hamsters. Uh, and that's that's pretty much how I know him is the underwater hamster guy. Now, and now he's getting blackmailed on Reddit for $217. Or they're going to write a mean article about him. I, I don't know many sites that would publish an article with fake shit in it. I mean, were they going to write an article saying he was convicted of crimes he wasn't convicted of? I'm fairly certain that shit would show up on a fucking criminal search. Especially something of that magnitude. 100,000 hours of community service. Are you fucking serious? Uh, uh, I'll have to look into that more at a later date. I, I really will. I, I, I just, I, <laughs> I'm just picturing him living in a hole. Who lives in a hole for three years? Like, fuck. Write a blog about that. I want to hear the fucking details of how that works. Uh, people in chat, we're talking about journalists here. Uh, very true. Very true. Saw a few super berries drop from the sky. Let me go collect. Let me go collect my shekels here. Uh, and then we'll continue on. But, uh, goddamn. Talk about it. It's just. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, because he, he hit his goal. I mean, uh, you know, after. I, I think he originally was sitting at like 350 bucks on Patreon. And I think he's around like, well, I mean, we saw on the screen, it's like a, a thousand eighty. Um, so he's making money to build his mega hab underwater, and then a sky hab too. He's got enough to buy all the shit to make a floating hamster city, which sounds fucking amazing. So I, I, I guess they saw him making money and decided they were gonna start hitting him up with blackmail. I, I don't know. Uh, just very, it's, it's a very weird story involving fucking hamsters, right? Uh, Metacurist, here's some bad goy bucks. What a story. Any opinion on the group that is fucking SPCC's five worth or five years worth of groomed callers? Also praise BGM, patron saint of internet autists. Yeah, somebody messaged me on Twitter and said SPCC was getting fucked with, uh, but I didn't really get details on what exactly is happening. Somebody said that um, they were calling up the same places and saying like, "Oh, you're getting you're getting pranked on live stream and shit." I. Uh, I, I, I like I don't know what exactly is going on, but I like I like the phone call shit. In fact, we were gonna watch some of that today, like hoax hotel shit like that, where people fuck with scammers. It was part of like the 419 thing I had planned, and then all this other crazy shit came up. I just want to be I just want to listen to funny, goofy fucking phone calls. Uh, Black tea recluse. This guy is 100% correct. Nothing good comes out of believing in the ramblings of a schizophrenic in the Middle East who got high on gas then proceeds to invent the religion of a people who got gassed. Pharaoh Owen, what did the Jewish pedo say to the child? Hey kid, want to buy some candy? Unstable anomaly. Jim, what is your advice to Ralph to help him get in shape? Can he possibly get rid of his hanging flesh? Thank you. Hashtag Guntgate. Yes, I am familiar with Guntgate. I've seen you bring it up. I've seen people post it in chat. I understand. You're all very hyped to talk about Guntgate. <laughs> Guntgate. Uh, as for my advice on Ralph to help him get in shape, well, he did when he was in prison. Uh, I think it was just to restrict your diet and exercise. It's basic shit. I think everybody's got access to that information. Uh, Caleb LL Show. Danny is stronger than Tonka saw. He saved us from the Shadow Lords, and his mind was Sonic Tonka. Can't even stand up to Worski, let alone in general. From Lost in the Void, the day Reddit and Discord die is the day humanity will begin to heal. Pharaoh, and again... I already archived all his fiction as HTML saves. It's safe. Thank you, Pharaoh. It was, uh, I'm guessing, a fucking large project. I, I was able to, like, you know, I, on his forum, I got some things archived. I downloaded some of his videos. Uh, but then I went to his DeviantArt, and it's like, you know, it's got a mature content filter, so you can't really use archival sites because you can't get past that. And it's just a pain in the ass. Uh, Rogue Fragment. Some euros from your homeland, fellow potato nigger. Oh, we've got something from Mr. Curie, a uh, heavy.com article. Psycho Tranny fucks dead horsehead. Got me a present. Is that the actual title? Is Psycho Tranny fucks a dead horsehead? Oh, you know, I, I'm gonna, I have to read that. You can't drop a title like that on me and not expect me to go at least look. 
It's a, it's a video. I can't play that on stream. And it's an actual video of a tranny fucking a dead horse head. I'm sorry, but I can't. I can't watch that on stream. We'll we'll get we'll be fucking thrown off of here so quick. Uh, and then uh, the sweetie's got a present for you, daddy. Uh, yeah, that's a fantastic video. And there's no fucking way stream me would tolerate me for one goddamn second if I showed a tranny banging a fucking decapitated horse head. Now the boys on Discord, on the other hand, they might be fine with it. They might they might think that's fucking just top notch shit. Just jump on in. We don't care. Welcome to Discord. Fuck as many horse heads as you feel necessary here. Oh, speaking of that. Uh, speaking of that, speaking of that. Uh, I had, I did have people send me some Discord shit. Uh, let's pull that up, continuing off of yesterday, while I'm on topic of that. Uh, let me see here. I believe Nick, Mo uh, uh, Nick Mon, or whatever, Nick Monroe, had a a whole fucking uh, write-up about it, and then other people were sending me screen caps. So let's let's see what people found. <laughs> I don't know what this is from. Uh, these are more amazing posts from people in Discord. Let's let's take a look and see how sane they are. Okay, here we go. Screen caps sent in. Let's take a look from Rabbi Ray Rana. Okay, I can't speak, and I am extremely outraged by that decision. Can I speak to your man or manager? I just want to fuck Pikachu. Apollo Husky. Now I want to fuck a Lady Deathclaw. 100% Halo. Hi, Autistic. I want to get fucked by a hunky anthro bug. Also, same. Legendary Amazing. I want to get fucked without a condom. God damn, everything is AIDS. Is that, is that Bronx Blogger's alternative account? Is that, is that what we're looking at? From Little Yeen, I want a death claw to fuck me. I want to get fucked and develop prostate cancer from it. From Rox, I want to fuck Lucifer. I want Lucario to fuck me. I want a dog to fuck me. Ooh. From Neil GH, I want to fuck a cat. From Avok, I want to be fucked so hard that it opens up a portal between realities, compressing infinite versions of myself, receiving the same fucking into a single point in space time. Converging us into a single being of infinite, or infinite mass. And creating a massive hole in the fabric of reality itself. Creating a black hole from such immense strength that it not only ends the universe, it ends all universes with such thorough destruction that it completely destroys time itself, effectively causing reality to have never existed at all. That would be a good fuck. From Meowsy, I want... A <laughs> I want a fucking dog to fuck me, but it's illegal. Deleted user, I want Incineroar's fucking knot on my ass. <laughs> oh, shit. A day, 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 amiibo, which I am, so yeah, me. I just want to get fucked in the ass by a big dad wolf. Lil Yeen, but I just thought like, huh, I want the Hulk to fuck me. Ainsworth, I want a swamp rat to fuck me. Several people are typing, I want Mr. Mime to fuck my ass. Mitchell Solace, I want Thanos to fuck me. I can't read this. Something Mitch's slutty pet. I want dragons to fuck both my holes. Ooh. Thagor's Riot, I want a Gengar to fuck me. And finally, Daddy Smarty, oof. Now I want to fuck, or now I want to fuck Nurse Joy. Gotta say, out of all of those, Incineroar's not up his ass was probably the one that caught me the most off guard. A lot of a lot of fucking degeneracy going on in Discord. These boys, these boys have an imagination. I don't. <laughs> everybody's one. I don't know what the fuck is up with this place. Oh, we've got more. We got more. Let's uh, let's take a look. Display capture. There we go. It's from uh, Quiz, I guess. Psh, I bet you're a loser. That even or you didn't even fuck a dog. From Zinthai, I'm dead. What did you just hit me with? A fucking XL dog dick. You want more? A fucking alligator. Morals are subjective. However, it is almost universally agreed upon that it's either that it's neither ethical nor hygienic to fuck an animal. A cow is raised in a farm to be killed and eaten, or for its milk. It is not used for sexual purposes. The farmer has full rights to kill the cow as the farmer raised the cow. And a response from Zinkener. Yeah, but it had been in the past almost universally agreed upon 
that black people are inferior to white people, that the sun revolves around the earth, and that dragons live in an uncharted lands. It's only unhygienic because they're not prepared for sex. Oh, what a what a well thought out, uh, reasonable response. Yeah, you shouldn't fuck uh, you shouldn't fuck dogs. Oh, really? Black people used to be slaves. Take that, conservatives. Did you know that African Americans were enslaved? I didn't think you did. Now, excuse me, why I raped my cat? Ooh, so it's a big brain response. XD. Everyone wants to fuck a dog. <laughs> These people live in another dimension. Okay, I, I need... If you're going to send me caps, you got to give me the full context of the conversation. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, we got... Uh, this looks like uh, they're arguing with staff. Let's take a look. Uh, okay, this is uh, Timo the Yiffer. The way Discord staff told us uh, that if it's perceived as young to a normal everyday user, it is cub underage, Reun. But Discord allows it, so ooh, what's he DMing about? Ooh, this is why I don't like being around new age furries. Uh, and then uh, they follow up that one of your admins ran a cub porn server. I, I Are they saying a Discord admin was running one of the servers? Timo the Yiffer, cubs are our future. Gay furry cub incest. Ooh, Yes, it is for Cubs under 13, winking face. God, they're just fucking everywhere. Just infesting the fucking service. People, uh, uh, yeah, there are other quotes. Cub porn is not a kink. Discord allows Cub as a heads up. I like hugging Cubs too, to be honest. Nothing wrong with hugging a small perp. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, let me see if I can find the Nick Mon one, because he had a whole... A whole list of fucked up shit. Ah, uh, crap. I think it's 112. Is it 112? I don't know what it is. Ah, uh, crap, crap, crap. I had this up earlier. Now I don't have it up. Uh, breaking news. Somebody said, I and changed the description of the Hype Break channel. Uh, what does it say now? It looks the same. Hype Break is about excellent or excitement and enthusiasm about the video games we live for and love. But we also believe in breaking the hype and keeping things real. The gaming channel features all manner of insightful uh, analysis of games, criticism of game journalism, and the culture surrounding video games. Hype Break is Ian Miles Chong. I'm pretty sure he had that up before. Not 100% certain, but I do believe he had that up before. Uh, you're going to have to give me a minute. You know, let me put on some background music. Well, I retardedly look for this stupid fucking thread, and then uh, we can jump into it. Uh, where is, where is our favorite video that's ever been made? <laughs> there we go. Could have got that. the old discord uh, let's start with context he's going over the article we actually went over uh, the Forbes article he talks about interesting streams showcasing illegal activities involving stolen goods and then we get into the child grooming uh, let's see so begins our uh, Mr. Templin's highlighting the leeway that discord gives the cub porn shit we showed some of that yesterday discord trust and safety moderator in question was quickly identified by uh, them and others the person decided to make their account private and erase their Discord positions from their Twitter bio. Looks like this is the uh, the guy everybody's talking about. Uh, Beals at Tiny Feeks, professional dork, or dork at a Discord app, gay taken by Tiger Slouch, thoughts are my own. And again, San Francisco, California. Shocking. Lo and behold, uh, they were able to further discover a possible other lead into Discord staff, this time somebody named... Uh, you all the foxes. Apparently, he helped set up this controversial policy, despite their own controversial past. Let's take a look. 
Uh, this was posted three months ago, so this looks like something they knew about for a while. Discord drama. All the Foxes now part of the trust and safety team at Discord, disabling accounts without reason. Other Discord admins might be on the same path. To settle everything straight after getting my account disabled for no proper reason and getting told our investigation says so, you're banned. And after weeks of trying to contact Discord in any way possible, I decided to dig a little more into this and found some dirt under the carpet. Everything starts here. Randomly out of nowhere, I found my account was disabled. I contacted Discord support and was given the answer, your account has been found to be uh, involved in servers that promote non-consensual pornography. I answered back and asked why I was banned when I've literally been in 20 servers and the only one where I actually wrote something was in a free-to-play game. To no avail, I get the buy our investigation. So I decided not to freak out and I started to Google other people with the same issues. And I find an immigrant gallery called When Your Discord Account is Disabled for Shit You Didn't Do. Uh, to my big surprise, it's another user explaining how all the foxes told him he was banned from something he didn't do and then got ignored, same as me. On the comments, you see at least five more people with the same experience uh, with a different toss reason or the same one. Uh, well, this is weird. There's some threads connecting here. I'm obviously going somewhere here. So I started to look up this All the Foxes Discord admin. And for a big, massive surprise, I found it. Twitch drama. All the Foxes gets demodded from R Gaming. Turns out he, she was the fall guy after all. I'll use the recap that was written in the post, but you should take your time and read all of it. And the multiple links there. After seeing this, I was totally staggered. So I started to contact Discord Twitter, which tried to help, I guess, by giving the disc. Okay. Twitter, which tried to help, I guess, by giving the disc. Okay, and then he's going over this.